for student choice this week, there was a couple of different ideas that were put up on Ucrew. So I tried to distill them into what are some of the application limitations to remote sensing. Um, I'm not entirely certain that I've captured the flavour of what those questions were, um, but hopefully we can step through this and maybe we have some more questions coming out as well. Because it's a little less specific than last week's question and, and the week before as well. Um, but so what I do want to come back to is is this idea that I started last week where we need to get information about the, about the subject that we're interested in, the environment in which it's sitting, and then the sensor options. Okay, so we'll build more into the sensor options this afternoon in the practical exercise, and also when we start looking at image processing later in the semester. But so if we remember the critical subject information is the who, what, when, where, how, why, stuff okay so when we were talking about the the Malaysian Airlines crash we were talking about how big the aircraft was potentially if it was broken up so any size of fragments any of that sort of information so it's it's really physically about the target the environmental information is about clouds time um, and anything that might make your the feature that you're looking at move so the uh, you know potentially if there's winds or currents in the aspect of the Malaysian airline um, and the sensor options is really about trying to find a particular satellite or sensor that's going to match our critical subject information and the environmental characteristics as well um, so the, the first one I'll go into uh, was the topic posed about trying to see if you could look at the effects of dingo culling programs on small mammals okay so what do you guys think about this? What jumps out to you with that particular topic? I yeah, I think that's a really good point. So the, the question is sort of looking at the individual mammals them, themselves. Um, but can we think a little bit more broadly than satellites? So what are maybe some other remote sensing techniques that could potentially be useful? Um, go Malcolm, sorry. Camera, camera traps. Yes, camera traps, that's remote sensing. Or yep. Yep, so we might, we might have some potentially helicopter surveys or someone else brought up something about some unmanned flight as well, could be options as well. The main thing for me when I looked at this topic is the word the effects. And so for me, if I want to look at how remote sensing can be used, you're not necessarily always looking at directly what the question is, but potentially the effect on the environment. Um, so you asked a question earlier about you, you were interested in, in a health application. And I said, well, maybe we can't necessarily monitor the health of a population, but is there some effect that we could potentially monitor? And so we spoke about potentially water quality as something that's associated with it, and you can look at a correlation. So you might not necessarily be able to look directly at what what is going on so you might not be able to directly monitor or map the mammals but is there some effect in the environment so it's a little bit hard with dingo dingoes but say if you're looking at cattle grazing so you might be looking at the at clearance in some areas or they're introducing weeds in some areas as well so you don't look directly at the cattle grazing but you look at the effect of the cattle grazing on the environment to then make that link back to the cattle themselves. Okay, so the second, oh actually, so now I'll bring you back to this table I showed um, back at the, um, at the beginning of the talk, or at the beginning of um, today's lecture, is really about what we want to be able to do when we're trying to find what sensor options we have. And if we've already gone down the line of suggesting that, well, perhaps um, earth observation remote sensing isn't great for dingo culling, but maybe we want to look at some other environmental aspect, what we really want to do is to get this information about the size, the, the colours, if you like, some contrast that you need to see, and some time information, and then link that to some kind of spatial, spectral, temporal, and radiometric dimension. Okay, because when we do that, then we can start to say, okay, well, this is the particular satellite that I would then use to monitor that effect. Okay, so if we say, oh, the the dingoes are within this particular area which covers 100 by 100 k's. The effect that they're causing on the environment is very, very small patches. Then we start to get information about the, spectra that, sorry, the spatial resolution 
of the satellite or sensor that we would need to use. Okay, so there's there's difference between the information that we require and the dimensions or the, the sensor specific characteristics that link with that. Okay, so with any application that we do, we can come up with this with a table of, of our information requirements and then link that to the specific dimensions that we require from a sensor and then figure out which sensor matches. And it may be that you say, oh, okay, I want a really, really high spatial resolution sensor and it needs to have high spectral resolution as well. And as you guys know from what you've just done with your debates, there's a trade-off. So you have to work out which is more important. And if, you, if that is actually what you need, then can you do the job? You know, is there something available that you can use? Yeah, so there's some because a lot of the thermal data is, is nighttime acquisition because when we use thermal data, what we want to look at is, is just the emission of, of heat as opposed to any reflected as well. Yeah, so, um, so nighttime is better for thermal. Um, and then you see the, uh, the night lights. Have you guys seen those satellite images of night lights of the Earth? Um, used less quantitatively and a bit of more fun, I guess, but used for looking at um, population density, that sort of thing. Um, but any reflected light isn't any good at night time. Second question was from Linda. Sorry, yeah. Um, so can you see the intense flowering after rain um, at Lake Eyre? Um, and you sort of had the, uh, the other aspect of specifically looking at ultraviolet, yeah? Um, okay, so deal with the ultraviolet side of things first. So do you think we can monitor or map any vegetation with ultraviolet light at all? What are the thoughts on that? Yeah, okay, so we've gotten the idea that maybe some flowers are reflecting some ultraviolet light. What else, do you, what other things do you know about ultraviolet light? One of the problems with really, really short wavelengths of light is they're extremely high energy. Um, and they also get scattered a lot. And again, remember the blue sky, it's short wavelength that gets scattered. Um, and this scattering actually results in what we call noise in our information. Um, so if you, um, if you think about a spectral signature and that nice smooth curve of vegetation, for example, if you go down into the UV area, what you tend to get is a lot of jagged lines. And it's really hard to extract the actual signal from the noise that's there. So what happens if we, use, if we use UV is often it's done in a lab situation where the UV, light, UV source is actually provided and then measured off it as opposed to being in a natural light situation. But satellites do use UV for other, asset, for other monitoring applications. Any idea what? For, yeah, for ozone. Yeah, for looking at ozone monitoring. Okay, so, but anyway, to come back to the question, it doesn't matter whether we use UV or not. It doesn't matter if it's UV, if the idea is that we want to have a look at the flowering. Okay. So we come and have a look at our critical subject information. So what is it that we need to know about that environment? Yeah, when the rain occurs. So we've got dormant seeds and then it rains and then, then we have flowers. So have a look at the image information here. So the first thing is we need to know the size of objects. Okay, so have a think specifically with the flowering, what, what sort of spatial information do you think is important here? High spatial resolution. Say again? High spatial resolution. Yeah, so you might want high spatial resolution, but before you need to know high spatial resolution, what's the question that you need to know or you need to know the answer to? The size of the smallest object. Yep, the size of the smallest objects that you want to, um, that you want to image. So are you trying to get individual flowers, individual petals, patches, or a large area? What is the size of that? The size of the individual things and then the extent as a whole. So if you're looking at individual patches, how far are they distributed around the environment? Yeah, Because then that will give me the pixel size that I need or the spatial resolution and the spatial extent required. Yeah. What about this part? What do I need to know in terms of the colour? Yeah, excellent. So I would potentially go out and measure the spectral signature of the flowers and the things that are around it. 
because I want to know what the flowers look like, but I want it to be different to other things. So I need to know what other things that could be confused with it look like. Yeah, so that's my spectral information. And what I want to be able to do is to work out what the smallest amount of spectral information required is. So can I use just red, for example? Or do I need to use blue, green, red, near infrared? How much of that information is required? Okay, so that will tell me, do I need hyperspectral data or multispectral data? But what about this one? I'm sort of given there here for temporal information. What do we need to know about those, about the plants or the environment? How long they flower for? How long they flower for? Yep. Yep. What's what time of year it is? The seasons. As someone said before when when the rain is expected. How soon after the rain? Really important. Yep. So does that sort of make sense? That process that you go through. So for any topic that you're interested in, can remote sensing be used to map coral bleaching? Can it be used to track a fire front? Whatever those applications are, we go through exactly the same process to figure out our answer. Okay, so the subject information, which forms this part of, your co of the table column. Okay, what is it about that feature we're trying to look at? The environmental information that might cause an impediment or might assist, and the associated sensor options. Okay, so what we really need is for these things to agree with our potential sensor options.